order, if everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor Foote, could you please call the roll? Present. 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 Are there any amendments to the agenda? Oh, I'm just uh, under new business. I wanted oh, you want to, to bring under, new, under new, business? new business. Yes. Okay. Uh, there's nothing. So. Okay, it's going to go to reports and communications from the mayor and the other officers. I'll start off. Uh, update regarding electric aggregation program. On May 10th, 2016, the Illinois Commerce Commission approved the rates comment filed for summer and non-summer pricing. Since 2012, the Village of Homer Glen, along with other communities in Will County, negotiated a fixed price electricity supply contract for our customers and small businesses. The program has saved participating Will County residents and businesses, businesses nearly $30 million country, countywide. When compared to the ComEd supply rates, unfortunately, given the new ComEd supply rates, the current contract with Home Field Energy will not provide savings in its final year. Since it's clear that ComEd price will be lower than the other contract for a significant period of time, we want to ensure the residents are informed about the electric aggregation program. Based upon the terms of the electricity supply contract, you have the right to return to ComEd or any other supplier for your electric supply without an early termination fee. In order to return to ComEd, you <coughs> your supply, please call Home Field Energy at 1-866-694-1262 and let them know that you would like to return to ComEd supply service as soon as possible. A letter from the village has been sent to all the residents currently in supply explaining the child uh, supply rates. These residents should expect to receive the letter by the end of this week. For those residents enrolled in the program who have not received the letter, we have posted it on the village's websites. <coughs> Second, no solicitors decal is not available. <coughs> if you wish to prohibit solicitors from knocking on your door or ringing your doorbell at your home, the village of Palmer Glen is offering no solicitors decals free of charge to the residents. Please visit the Village Hall Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. to pick up your decal. Uh, or please call 301-0632 with any questions. But this we can put on the door now. Once this is on the door, they can't bother you anymore. And this would be very helpful. Community-wide mosquito spray. Please be aware that the community-wide mosquito spraying is scheduled to take place on Monday, June 13th, beginning after sunset, weather permitting. This is the first community-wide spraying this summer. Residents can also receive advanced notices of spray events by contacting Clark directly and signing up through the Mosquito Hotline. That would be at 1-800-942-2555 and asking to be added to the prior notification list. For the Village of Homer Glen residents, we will be asked to provide their name, address, and phone number, and this will allow them to receive a phone call from Clark the day of the village-wide spray. Laricide control and treatment and drainage and detention basis is re reoccurring through the summer month in addition to a four monthly wide spray due through September. South Extension to the Heroes Trail. We are excited to announce that the South Extension of the Heroes Trail is nearly completed. While some residents have already begun to use the trail, the trail remains closed until safety features and landscape work is completed. For those of you who are unaware, the south extension of the trail runs within a common right-of-way easement uh, of Bell Road from approximately Martin Gale Lane to 159th Street. This will ultimately connect, connect to the proposed bike trail that will be constructed as part of 159th Street improvement project. Maps of the Hero Trails are available at the back table or can be downloaded from the village's website. Um, with that, we'll go to the trustees. Uh, Trustee Barry? No report this evening, Mayor. Okay. 
Thank you. Trustee Costa. Uh, just briefly, Mayor. Um, as the Mayor reported with our Heroes Trail is, is uh, about finished now, just want to remind all the residents that you cannot take a, a motorized vehicle on our trails uh, and also on, on Comet property that's trespassing. You will be uh, stopped and picked up and ticketed by the Will County Sheriff's Police. So please, no motorized vehicles, especially ATVs and motorcycles, in Comet property or on any of our trails. Thank you. Trustee uh, Rogers. I have nothing to report. Trustee Sweets. Thank you, Mayor. Reporting for the Environment Committee, just to mention uh, that the spring parkway tree planting should be completed by the end of this week, and please be reminded to water these new trees. The Village of Homer Glen, Homer Township, along with members of the Environment Committee, will host a summer stargazing event on Friday, June 10th, from 9 to 11 p.m., weather permitting. Um, and that will take place at the historic Trantina Farm in Homer Township. The Trantina Farm is located at 15744 West 151st Street, east of the intersection of Gouger and 151st. As a reminder, the electronic drop-off center at the Lockport Public Works opened last month to Will County residents. That is, and they are open on Tuesday and Friday only from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. Two TVs per vehicle are permitted. The address for the site is 17112 Prime Boulevard, east of I-55 in Lockport. Front door service is also available through 18 recyclers for $60 per TV. If interested in this service, please call 815-630-4308. That concludes my report. Thank you, Justice Seuss. Justice Gabriel. Yeah, reporting on the, uh, behalf of the Parade and Festival Committee. First and foremost, I didn't get here early enough to talk to you, but the Parade and Festival Committee met yesterday, and we'd like to consider closing the park, the Village Hall Park, for Wednesday the 22nd, Thursday the 23rd, and Friday the 24th. Yep. Um, I don't know if we need motions for that, if that's something you can just approve. No, I mean, we can approve it. It's just we want to let the public know. And let yeah, and I wanted to let the public know simply because we are obviously going to be gearing up for the fireworks uh, show for Thursday night. Right. And so we need the park, we need the availability to the property for Wednesday night through Friday night with cleanup and everything. So. Right, and this um, is just for safety sake that we're yeah. doing this. So we'll post signs. I think uh, Mike DeVivo from the highway department said he would post signs so we can get that done as well so the public knows that it's closed. But moving forward from that, the festival will run Thursday, June 23rd, uh, 2016 through Sunday, June 26th through th uh, 2016. Uh, we have a kids fun zone, Mr. D's magic and illusion show, the magic skies fireworks, and there are other highlights for Thursday night. The Kids Fun, fun Zone will start at 6.30 p.m., which consists of a jump and fun uh, for kids so they can play. Uh, Mr. D's Magic Show will kick off at 7.30, and the fireworks will be ready to blast off at 9.30 p.m., weather permitting. Friday night would be our rain date if for some reason we need it. We hope we don't. Uh, the pre-carnival party uh, for Homer residents with, spe uh, with uh, families with special needs will run from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. on Friday, June 24, 2016. Applications can be found at the Homer Township website, www.homertownship.com, or by contacting the Homer Township office, 708-301-0522, and asking for Lindsay Soa. Also, they're available at the festival website at www.homerfest.com. Don't forget about the parade on Saturday morning, June 25th, starting at 11 a.m. There will be many new attractions on the parade route, which starts at 151st and Parker, heading north to Briarwood. Uh, there will be a wide variety of food vendors for the entire weekend with a new vendor tent which will feature 14 different vendors who have registered with a wide variety of products from arts, jewelry, crafts, essential oils, things of that nature. We have live music every day, every night, featuring 10 total bands from Thursday through Sunday. And of course, we're always looking for volunteers, uh, both for parade and fest grounds. Please contact Lindsay Soa at the Homer Township office again at 708. 301-0522 for more details. And please remember, your children can earn their community service hours throughout this wonderful event. I actually saw that posted in the Homer Horizon today, which was great. Uh, it was on the second page, I think, second or third page. Uh, and also remember, you, um, uh, check out our website at www.homerfest.com and click on the uh, info link at the top for more detail. Also check out the Homer Township page for more details related to the parade and volunteering for both events. Uh, with that, Includes my report. That was an awful. Sorry. No problem. Mayor, just to um, add to that, I met with uh, 
thousands and Monday night, and they really need volunteers mm -hmm. that are over the age of 21. <coughs> They're short, very, very short. So For the beer tent? She or just said in general. No, no it's general. general. Yeah, in general. Okay. We're general. always in need of volunteers. So if anyone can help, please come forward. Uh, is there a treasurer's report? No report. Yeah, I'll just touch on what Paula said as far as the beer tent, the organizations are all set, so we're good there, but they do need just general volunteers. Um, if we could just highlight that we really want people to use the remote lots, um, it's the Bankston Pumpkin Farm, they were gracious enough to let us use it, and we're going to have shuttle buses. So we're encouraging people to come there, park there, shuttle to the fireworks site, especially if you're only doing the fireworks. Thank you. Uh, village attorney. Nothing, Your Honor. Thank you. Public safety. Village manager. Right. No report, just happy to be here. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have public comment. There is a three minute limit. If it takes longer, it takes longer. <coughs> Hi. Um, I, I'm coming to ask you what we can do with our backyards. Um, a lot of people that live south of me have built the easement up, so I get a ton of water in my yard. Ton. And my neighbor, 14342 South Birchdale Drive. I mean, it's <coughs> all the way. It's up to the third fence post now. It never used to come that far, but everybody has built up. 14342. And my neighbor's here also. She lives next door to me. She gets the same thing I do. Okay, in the street again. Birchdale. You know where the speeders are. The speeders are everywhere. Now. No, no, I'm not, not like that in my restraint. Well, we'll have the lieutenant look into that too. Okay. Right. He's a great guy, he helps us out every time we uh -huh. need it. I know, I saw some of the officers out there sometimes. They can't be out there in a squad car because they don't stop speeding. Them. That's public right? Yes, he is. It's terrible, it, it's really bad. And I know you're not supposed to build anything on the easement, but what are we supposed to do when we're the low spots? Well, what we will do is we will have uh, someone from the village go out there, take a look at it, see who's done something, see who has pulled a permit to do something. If they are causing problems, then there will be an issue and we'll get it taken care of. Sounds good to me, I'll be happy with that. Thank you. You're welcome. Office, do you want to talk to her? I mean, um, our neighbors build just uh, by the fence. They put some kind of plastic or metal, like a planks, and put the dirt over. So it's like a foot tall, like higher than us. So just so the water. Stuck with the water. <laughs> and her house, we'll her house is closer yeah, to the water than this. my house. My house is still pretty far away. But hers is a lot closer. And plus now, when it rains, it just doesn't rain normally. And, and we're getting this Zika virus or Zika mosquitoes or whatever. So I really don't want a ton of water in the yard. Uh, 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 we'll have you guys want to take a look at it for you. And then, uh, then we can let you know what we can do for you. Appreciate it. Uh, that's it for public comment. John, you don't have anything to say? We're off of our boat. All right. All right. I'll tell you what. Ask if you should. I know what he's going to do. You're talking about the electric aggregation. Okay. Now, you say that uh, if you're taking, which I was told how to figure it out, it's, I forgot my glasses back there, but it's, on the paper, it says six point something. The decimal's in the wrong spot. 
decimal scatter, and before the six, there should be a zero six. Because if I take that six point times my 445 hour, kilowatt hours, it winds up with $31. Then when I take what this is with the six point something, without that decimal in there, I'm up to $2,810. Boy, it really went up on it. Yeah, right, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> they said, no, it's not. I'm, I'm mistaken as the way I'm figuring it out. Well, in the electric, I happen to deal with electric energy aggregation of my job. And you're right, I should say point zero six one. See what I mean? It's confusing some of the people that I've talked to, and they well, says, what the hell's going on here? I says, oops. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> well, they say worse than that, too, but uh, I don't think you're going to be able to send out another letter to correct that, but, you know, kind of look at stuff in the future. That, <laughs> I agree. It was just a mistake, but it, uh, they have to know that we're trying to save money, not cost them more money. We already got one company that does it to us. We're going to. Right? I agree. Okay. With that, we're going to public comment. Is there any legislation and action items? Is there a motion to approve resolution number 16-009, a resolution approving a proposed roadway improvement resurfacing program for 2016 in the village of Homer Glen? Mm -hmm. So moved. So moved by Trustee Costa. I'll second. I'll second Trustee Cabrillo. Is there any discussion? No, I just have a comment, Mayor. Are we going to list uh, these streets on the website so people know what's forthcoming? Uh, yeah, we could. I think it would be a good idea, so at least just all of them uh, know that they're going to have a little inconvenience for a little bit. Some of the uh, some of the repairs are as, as short as 60 feet or 90 feet, uh, but to list them out, they plan on doing Forest View Drive for 3,030 feet, so that's going to be Lakeview Drive to Will Cook Road. Then you're going to have Lakeview Court to Will Cook Road. That's going to be 2,550 feet. Forest View Drive to Lakeview Drive, 930 feet. Woolly Hill Drive to East End, 390 feet. Forest View Drive to Woolly Hill Drive, 920 feet. South End to Murphy Drive, 390 feet. Pinewatha Court, 200 feet. Teakwood Drive, 2,200 feet. Split Rail Drive, 200 feet. The Mock Road, so it's going to be Nolan Court to Janice Parkway, <coughs> 4,630 feet. West End to La Mock Road, uh, it's going to be 650 feet. Cokes Road is going to be 90 feet. Shady Lane, which is Governor Road to East End, is going to be 675 feet. Forest Court, which is going to be Shady Lane to North End, is going to be 120 feet. Here's the biggest one, 167th Street. East Lake Parkway to Parker Road, 7,075 feet. Parker Road, 163rd Street to Doctor Place, 1,125 feet. And Oak Court, West End to Oak Trail, uh, 326 feet. The amount to do all this work is going to be budgeted for $1,318,500. So, are there any other questions or concerns? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Justin Bearden? Aye. Justin Sweet? Aye. Justin Rogers? Aye. Justin Cabrio? Aye. Justin Costa? Aye. Motion carries. Household Hazardous Waste Intergovernmental Agreement is a motion to direct Mayor Yukich to sign an intergovernmental agreement with Will County for a Household Hazardous Waste Collection event scheduled for Saturday, September 24th, 2016 from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Village Hall parking lot. It is up now, it's gonna be the new Village Hall parking lot at that time, because we'll be out of here and we'll be at the new. Is it understood that the Village's contribution to Old County for this event will not exceed $7,500? I so move. Trustee Suisse. Second. Trustee Costa. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Costa. Aye. Trustee Campbell. Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Trustee Berry? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, 
Is there a motion to approve the purchase of a 2017 Ford Utility Interceptor all-wheel drive vehicle in the amount of $26,414? Uh, the reason it's being bought right now is the old one has well over 100,000 some miles on it, and the village hasn't purchased anything for multiple years. We need a new one. So moved by Trustee Casta. I'll second. Trustee Sweet. Is there any discussion? The, the Crown Victoria, the 1999, you said that's dead, right? Correct. Yeah, replacement bed or repairs is more than the car is worth. So that leaves us with a, a sick bin, 06 and an 07? Correct. Can that be donated to the fire department? Mm -hmm. We'll have to kind of look and see what type of repairs we may need. If oh. we're even doing that, it's um, more like 99. Well, don't they use that for? Yeah, that's that potentially for oh. training purposes. Training. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Trustee Gabriel. Aye. Trustee Sweet. Aye. Trustee Rogers. Aye. Trustee Marion. Aye. Trustee Baxter. Aye. Motion carries. Next is there are two motions for the board's consideration. Motion one is there a motion to create a park donation subcommittee. I still move. Trustee Sweet. I'll second. Trustee Caprio. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Kafka? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Trustee Barrian? Aye. Motion carries. Motion number two. Is there a motion to approve the mayor's appointments of Bob Kamen, Kyle Sanders, Cassandra Courtright, Ed Cryer? and Dale Jansen to the Park Donation Subcommittee of the Parks and Recreation Committee. It is understood that if appointed, Bob Kamen will serve as a chairperson of the subcommittee. <coughs> Furthermore, is it understood that the term of the members of the subcommittee shall coincide with the terms of the Parks and Recreation Committee? I so move. Trustee Sweet. A second. Trustee Caprio. Is there any discussion? Just one question there. You mentioned that prior. It's, mm -hmm. not, a, it's not on the motion in our if I could respond, um, actually when John was preparing the sheets, he had not heard back from Ed Cryer for a confirmation. Um, and so uh, Ed did confirm on Monday, and that's why we adjusted the mayor's script. Oh, okay. to say that. Okay. okay. Madam Board, we start a roll. Trustee Garza? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Trustee Barrett? Aye. Motion carries. Number five, April legal bills. Is there a motion to approve the April 2016 Mahoney Silverman and Cross LLC legal bills in the amount of $5,167.50? So moved. <coughs> Trustee Casta? I'll second. Trustee Sweet. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Marion? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right. This is going to be old business. Uh, we're going to have discussion on naming the Village Hall Park property. So before we do a motion, and we come up with what we plan on naming it, and what we're going to start off with is what we're going to name the park overall, and then we will have areas of the park that we will be discussing later on to put some other names to it. I think some of us discussed it and liked the um, the idea of the heritage. Heritage Park? Yes, I, I um, like that name too, Homer Glen's Heritage Park. I really liked the definition and the information that was provided with that because I think that would be on a plaque or on a uh, sign that would be a great uh, why, why? You know, why did we name it that? I, I think the definition was fantastic. And um, because when you look at some of the others, there's so many villages and towns that have blank community park or blank village greens. So I think this separates it a little bit. And we can also, we can call <coughs> something the village green where if there's a gazebo or something like that. So we can use, incorporate some of the other names. But I think the main name would be Homer Glen's Heritage Park. Okay. And what else? Heritage Park sounds good. I agree. Okay. <clears throat> Carlo? Yeah. Okay. So, 
If that's the case, is there a motion to approve the name of, <coughs> are we naming it? Homer Glenn Heritage <laughs> Park. <coughs> Homer Glenn Heritage Park. Okay. All right. Mayor, could, could, could we maybe have, maybe Trustee Suisse could, I, I don't know if you have it in front of you, I don't want to put you on the spot, but the definition that you referenced, I think is something that I, I think would be good to have it read into the record since it's what I think is appealed to a lot of us is the, the thinking behind this, this suggestion of Heritage Park. Hold on, I'm going to have to get it so I can read it. I'm not, I'm not, certainly not trying to put you on the spot, just knowing um, as a co chair of the Parks Committee. Okay. The definition, and, and we probably don't need to put all of it on the sign, but here's some of the basics. The name for our new park, it, it was, uh, the name for our new park and village center seems to be fairly evident. When you look up the definition of the word heritage, it reads property that is or may be inherited, property that descends to an heir, something transmitted by or acquired from a predecessor, a legacy, an inheritance, a tradition. Features belonging to the culture of a particular society, such as traditions that were created in the past and still have a historical importance. Something that is reserved and preserved for a particular group as a way of life that gives us a sense of history and heritage, the richness of our diverse cultural heritage. This will be a place that we will create as being considered important to our history, culture, and people, and our way of life that will descend to future generations. It will be an unspoiled natural environment that reflects the honor, pride, and courage from the first settlers in this area, the farmers, the volunteer firemen, members of our military, to the volunteers that recognized several years ago that our area needed to become incorporated, and to that end, began working on volunteer committees to make it happen. Heritage Park will be a place that consists of all the qualities and traditions that have continued over the years and will continue to grow for generations. And so, the name Heritage Park will denote a vital, vibrant, valuable space set up to preserve our town's proud heritage that will be reserved for generations as a way of life, community, and nature in harmony. Thank you. Okay. So, now the way it reads on the uh, paper here, it says strictly Heritage Park. Do you want it to be like Heritage Park or do you want former Glen Heritage? I, my preference would be Heritage Park. I think Heritage Street. Park? Yeah. That would be my preference as well. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. <laughs> and the good thing about this election, I think, is that it was submitted by anonymous. So any number of people will be able to take credit for it over, <laughs> over time. <laughs> so. Who thought you did it, right? It was not me. <laughs> I, I, it's been a preference, but it's, I, it was not me. Okay. All right. So is there a motion? Is there a motion to approve the name Heritage Park as the name of the village park property located at 14240 West 151st Street? Furthermore, it's understood that as park development occurs, specific areas and amenities within the village will be named separately. So, within the village park? Yes, within the village park. I'll second. Trustee Rogers and Trustee Sweet. Any discussion? Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, all in favor? Or no, you call the roll. Trustee Costa? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee C? Aye. Trustee Barrett? Aye. Okay. Is a let I here? Well, Alette, why don't you come up front? If you just up by the podium right now. <clears throat> Alette I is a homer junior high school, eighth grader, who won the Will County Spelling Bee in March. Following her local win, she moved up to Scripps National Spelling Bee <coughs> and was successful in the preliminary rounds. Olette was one of 45 finalists out of 285 contestants. So at this time, the board and I would like to commend Olette for her tremendous achievement.
by the way, on the on the supplement sheet, second paragraph, third sentence, there's a misspelled word there. So I just want to add that it was it was really exciting to follow the spelling bee that we can see your progress. And as a former teacher, I was really, really proud of you. Thank you. So with that, we had a nice little statue set up for you. Let's turn, turn this way. This way you're on TV. <laughs> and, and it reads out, you know what, I gotta turn my cheaters back on. Rising star presented to Olet I for demonstration, ambition, and a strong will to succeed. You're on a path to greatness. Keep reaching for the sky from Scripps National Spelling Bee 2016 finalist. So that is yours. You. You're quite a <coughs> And we are very proud of you for getting that far. Well, let her hold it up and take a picture. Yeah, yeah, this way. Do you want to center in the Can middle? I get a picture of both of you in the center? Yeah. Yeah. And the sale? No, Thank you. Let's do it on one side. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you. One more, just make sure we start. Two, three. Thank you. got stumped on? What was that word? <laughs> she wants to forget that word. <laughs> I wouldn't use it too much either. <laughs> You'll never forget I spell it. We are very proud of you. That, that takes a lot. Okay. Uh, next is going to be executive session. New business. Oh, business. oh that's right. Okay, new business. I would I would like to uh, proposition the board to see if I know a lot of the trustees are very involved in the fest to see if we if they want to make Monday the twentieth at five p.m. Uh, the board meeting instead of that Wednesday right before the fest starts. If people are available, we cannot do it later because at seven p.m. plan commission pushed up their meeting from Thursday to that Monday. You know, Monday at 5 would be helpful, but excuse me, I'm sorry, Mayor, if I could sit up. Monday would be really helpful because, of course, Wednesday night, we're going to be out there trying to make sure everything is set. Um, so and I'd like to see that Monday if possible. It would really help. So. I'm good with it as well. I'm fine with Monday at 5. In, in general, I guess, I don't have my calendar with me, but I'm, I'm sure I can move things around. Sure. Okay, consensus is Monday the 20th at 5. And we have to be out of here by 7. Yes. Uh, uh -oh. Can I ask that maybe we consider a different time? The uh, new plan commission is to review a uh, project for Starbucks uh, because of some posting issues uh, that was posted at 7. Um, we were hoping to go directly to the board um, that Wednesday for the Starbucks project. Um, and uh, so we, we'd like to maybe look at that if, if it's all possible. Tuesday might be okay. I know there's an environment. No, it's a fest meeting on Tuesday. Sorry. That's our final. That's an important meeting for the fest. I mean, two of us for sure would, would not be here if it was Tuesday. It just depends what three. What you what three of us yeah, right. be here, right? Because I so depending on what you think might be on the agenda, I mean, we might not even have a quorum for that day. What if we did uh, that Wednesday earlier at five? Would that help you guys at all? No, five o'clock is when we're meeting to start setting things up. At the you got the tables. You got the chairs. You've got all the vendors going in there. That's a rough. That's a real tough week. Yeah. 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 
plus, you, you know, you got to figure once it. Could you switch the planning meeting to five? Yeah. yeah. It's posted. The oh, sorry. This is You do your meeting at 8 o'clock and make it a quick one and have the Starbucks <laughs> on the agenda. Okay. Immediately following the prank commission. But the problem is trying to get the three, well, I, I don't vote on it, but you're still going to need this in two because it's too hard to pull them from there to come here. To, you're so limited to what you have and then you're well, just. He's talking about well, on Monday. Yeah, right after the prank commission. You could have this meeting at 8 o'clock and just keep the agenda on. If you move your plan, if you move the plan commission up to 6, you can't move it. Oh, you can't move it. Oh, that's that one. All right. So, all right. If, 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 if can we have a board meeting, the fo a quick board meeting the following week? All of a sudden, this is a well, horrible yes. rush. Well, no. The, the problem with it, the problem with Chipotle and, and Starbucks is they have to get going on this. If that building is not up, to where they can start you know, fixing the inside of it by October 1st and lose it. So it is very important. If, if it's something for Monday night and it's going to be at 8 o'clock and that's the only thing on the agenda, would you have a problem with it? No. I'll do whatever it takes. All right. So um, Monday at 8 o'clock. By, <laughs> by law, we actually have to have one other item on the agenda and that's prevailing wage ordinance. Okay. Aaron. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. Um, I just on behalf of the Greek Church, they need to get their liquor license for their fest in July. So three whole items. <laughs> but that's, you know, a rubber stamp, so the thing is already kind of a, you know. Oh, we'll okay. just bring our coffee. We'll be fine. Yeah, the coffee. You know, that's something people that are working at fest get some sleep before the fest starts, because then there is no sleep. <laughs> they, they really, yeah, I know. I remember nights sleeping in our cars there. All right, uh, so is everyone okay with Monday night at 8 o'clock? Yes. Monday night at 8 o'clock? I'll make it work. Okay. We appreciate your support. I can do it. Thank you. And that gives us enough time to put notice out. Monday the, the 20th of right. April. So the only thing we're going to have to do then is we're going to have to start with the planning commission to make sure that that's the only thing on the, is that the only thing on that's their the agenda for that night? Okay. And then we'll get a copy of their agenda so that we can at least review and have some time to yeah, we can be here at the planning commission meeting, listen to what it is so we know all the arguments right. or problems. Okay. Um, all right, so that works. Okay. okay. Now, then we go into the executive session. So move. Do we have to have a motion on that? Yes. Okay. All right, let's go. Brian, we'll wait. What is the motion we you mean the meeting date or executive session? No, you don't. Executive Oh, I need a motion to adjourn to the regular meeting. Just a motion to go in executive session. That's what I'm saying. You can go in the executive Is there a motion to go into executive session? <clears throat> For the purposes of discussing personnel and land acquisition. So moved. Justin Casta. Second. Let's see, Barry. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Costa? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Seas? No, Trustee Darius? Aye. Motion carries. All right. We're going to have a.